So today we're going to begin a new book in the series, The Boxcar Children. But we're going to be reading a book that I've actually never read before. This is a book that I've always been intrigued with, but I've never read it. And it's called The Yellow House Mystery. It's written by our author, Gertrude Chandler Warner. Uh, she wrote the 19 uh, first 19 books for the boxcar children and then many ghost writers wrote oh goodness probably a hundred more boxcar children but this particular book has 16 no looks like 15 chapters maybe 16 i'm not sure but so the very first chapter we're gonna the very first chapter we're gonna read is called the cave so this is again once again the yellow house mystery chapter one the cave Four lively children lived with their grandfather, Alden, in a big house. The children's father and mother had died years before. Their cousin, Joe, lived in the big house, too. He was growing up, and his cousins thought he was great fun. First, there was Henry Alden, who was 16 and in high school. Jessie Alden came next. She was in high school, too. Violet was a pretty dark-haired little girl of 12, and Benny was 7. Benny was on his way home from school one day in spring. The minute he went into the house, he heard the telephone ringing. Then he heard Mrs. McGregor, the housekeeper, answer. It's for you, Benny, she said. She was excited. It's your cousin, Joe. Benny went to the telephone. Hello, Joe, he said. We're going to have a blast, Benny, Joe called over the telephone. <clears throat> the men are almost ready to blast the top off the cave. They say that you children can come over to the island if you stay right with me. You get the others, and you come along. Okay, Joe, cried Benny. We'll come just as quickly as we can. He hurried to the hall to tell his brother Henry, for this cave was the one that the children had found themselves the summer before in Surprise Island. They had crawled in to see how far they could go. Without trying, they found some Native American Indian tools in the sand, which Joe said were very wonderful. Now their grandfather had sent some men to the island to take the top off the cave so it'd be easier to dig the things out. Was that Joe? What did he want? Asked Henry. He came out into the hall. He said, the men are going to blast the cave open, shouted Benny. Last summer, he told us we couldn't come that day and now he says we can. Benny ran upstairs two steps at a time calling, Jess, Jess, Vi, Vi. Well, what's the matter now, Benny? asked Jessie, looking up from her schoolwork. The men are going to blast the top of the cave off on Surprise Island. We have to hurry and get over there. Who said that? asked Jessie. Joe answered Benny. He just telephoned me. But we can't go without Grandfather, said Violet softly. Grandfather's just driving into the yard. Henry called loudly up the stairs. Hurry and come down before he puts the car away. Mr. Alden could not understand a word at first because everyone was talking at first and at once. But his driver seemed to be turning the car around anyway. Mr. Alden was smiling to himself. Did Joe call you too, Grandfather? cried Henry. Mr. Alden laughed. Well, we'll go to the dock and over to the island in the motorboat. I hope Captain Daniel will have the boat on the side. On this side, said Henry. Joe seems to be in a hurry and said the men won't wait for us for very long. Oh, I hope they won't blast until we get there, cried Benny. I don't think they will, said Mr. Alden, smiling. If Joe sent for you, he will wait until you have time to get there. Of course he will, Grandfather, said Jesse. This, there is Captain Daniel on the dock already. It was true. Captain Daniel smiled when he saw the four children coming with her grandfather. He liked them all. I'm waiting, and Joe is waiting on the island, and so are the workmen. Joe said they won't blast until you all get there. Good, I'm glad, said Benny, getting into the boat and sitting down. They were soon on their way across the water to the island and when they had spent, and where they had spent such a happy summer the year before. They were all thinking of that exciting day when they'd found the cave. Benny looked at the captain. I don't suppose you remember the Native American Indian, the Indian things we found in the cave, Captain Daniel. Indeed, I do, said the captain with a laugh. You children didn't know then that Mr. Joe dug up things for a living. But I did. And I knew Mr. Joe when he was a little boy. Remember how excited Joe was, cried Jesse. He couldn't let us even dig anymore inside the cave. 
That was all right, though, Jesse, said Henry. We wanted things to be done the right way. These workmen know how to dig better than we do. And here we are, going to blast the top off the cave, said Benny. There's Joe now, said Jesse. Who in the world is that with him? It's a girl. That's not a girl, said Benny. That's a lady. Well, anyway, she isn't very old, said Jesse. She's awfully pretty, said Benny, as they came near. Hello, everyone, cried Joe as the boat stopped at the dock. This is Alice Wells. She came over to look at the Native American Indian things you found. She knows a lot about such things. That must be interesting work, said Jessie to Alice, shaking hands. She liked Alice at once. She had such a beautiful smile. Yes, it is. I feel as if I knew every one of you. This is Benny for sure, and Violet and Henry. Joe has told me so much about you all. Joe smiled at Mr. Alden as if she already knew him well. Benny took Alice's hand. Let's go right off and see them blast. This is going to be fun for you. Benny, said Mr. Alden, smiling at the little boy. The men are going to let you push the handle to set off the blast. Oh, boy! Where's the handle? Where's the handle? Joe led the way without a word. Past the little yellow house, past the barn where they'd lived that summer before, past the beach. There beside a crowd of workmen, they saw a handle in the ground. Here they are, said one of the workmen. Are you the little guy that's going to set off this blast? Now you take hold of that handle and push it down as far as you can. Benny did as he was told. <laughs> From far away down the island came a loud noise like thunder. Then the children saw a great cloud of smoke and then flying rocks. What a noise it was. See that picture? Yeah. They all watched the smoke still coming from the cave. Very good, said Joe. Let's go. Down the path they went. Soon they came to the cave. The big rocks were broken into small pieces, and the men started to take them away. The whole cave was open. The children watched quietly. I suppose nobody can dig in the cave until all those rocks are lifted off, said Henry, at last. That's right, said Joe. They will be taking rocks off for days. Really, there's nothing to see for now. You mean we'd better go home then? Said Miss Rollin. He winked at Benny. Well, I don't care too much, said Benny. Anyway, we blasted, and that's more than I expected. You will come over many times when we get, get to digging, said Alice. We have already taken away the shell pile and all the things in it. The museum people were delighted with all the things, said Joe. You found some things that they had never seen before. That's right, said Alice. Joe and I are going to try and find out just what they are. And I shall be working on them for a year, maybe. Maybe even longer. That's good, said Benny. You come up to our house and see us. He was surprised when Joe laughed. At summer that same evening, Benny sat thinking. What's the matter, Ben? asked Henry. Aren't you going to be eating your supper? Oh, yes, but I was just thinking. What about, Violet said. Well, I was thinking about Alice. I think Joe likes her. I think that's why he wanted us to go home. <laughs> well, <laughs> laughed Jessie. What of it? Didn't you like her yourself? Oh, yes. I liked her a lot, but that's the difference. I think Joe is going to marry her. <laughs> what? shouted Henry. How can you tell? Joe had just met her today. Oh, no, he didn't, my boy, said Mr. Alden. Joe and, and Alice, they went to school together when they were children. Alice had been away for a long time. She just came back to do this work for Joe. Well, I wish Joe would get married, said Jesse. It would be lonesome for him living all alone on the top floor of this house with a lot of children like us. And an old man like me, said, his grandfa said her grandfather. But I tell you something. I watched Joe and Alice today, and I think Benny is right. But don't say a word. Let's wait and see what happens. Yes, let's, said Benny. But you'll see that they will get married all right. Then he finally started to eat his supper. Now, usually I tell you what the chapter is. Next, I'm not going to tell you the chapter title because it will possibly give away 
what's going to happen next. So if you want to make a prediction about what you might think, I think the chapter title just might give it away. All right. I hope you've enjoyed the first chapter of the Yellow House Mystery. I know that I have, and I'm looking forward to chapter two.